Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Next Door Netadmin. I got a new toy this week, and I'm really liking it, so I figured I would show it to you guys. Again, right off the bat, this is not sponsored content. Nobody has paid me to do this. This is something that I got for my own needs, and I'm just sharing it with you because I think it's cool. But first of all, let's set the stage. Why do I need this thing? What is it? Well, I've talked a bunch about doing different boot media. I would have said boot CDs, but nobody's really burning CDs anymore. I still create ISO images for use in virtual machines, but fundamentally this is boot media. Whether that is a clean version of Windows 11 or whether that is Windows PE, but you also think about all the other boot media that you need as a system administrator, whether that is something specific for administering secure boot, or whether that is a version of Linux, Ubuntu perhaps, or maybe Linux Mint, or maybe Gparted for a specific partition editor, or you name it. There might be many boot medias that you need to install various systems or to troubleshoot or to diagnose or even, like I said, for specific purposes, whether that's taking an offline backup or administering particular aspects of the machine. There can be many of them. And typically, I've always ended up carrying around a whole lot of USB sticks for that reason. Sometimes like eight of them all rattling around in my backpack. Yes, I know I could get a USB key wallet for them, but I didn't have a need for it. I just had a handful of USB sticks. And I bet that a lot of other system administrators had much the same thing. Just fistful of USB sticks and off we go. Okay, well, using these requires finding the right one. And sometimes it requires just regenerating a completely new one, overwriting your USB stick with the tool that you need right now. And then you overwrite it again and you try and keep track of it all. There are software systems available that you can kind of have multiple ISOs on there and then just use one one stick or one USB connected storage and choose which tool you want to boot off of. Um, probably the one that is most well known is Ventoy. That is a free and open source project so far as I am recalling. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But Ventoy also has while it has lots of compatibility, it is compatible with a broad range of ISOs. It's also a software-based solution. And in some cases, it's documented that Ventoy has to modify the actual software in order to make it work. In some cases, for example, for Windows, apparently it needs to modify some of the Windows code in order to make it boot correctly from this software environment. And for various reasons, that may not be optimal, but it's also essentially a software emulation. It's, it's not a piece of hardware. I got a piece of hardware. This... Um, is made by an outfit called IODD. This is their ST300 device. At its core, it is essentially a 2.5 inch SATA SSD of whatever size you want that you slide into the housing and it's a, it's a pretty thin housing, just big enough for your 2.5 inch SSD. And when you plug it in and turn it on, it offers you the capability of mounting multiple boot media. You can do a virtual optical drive. You can do one of those. You can do virtual hard drives, up to three of those at once, plus mounting the actual hard disk that's inside the unit. So that's up to five drives you can have connected 
on a single USB connection of various types. Your optical disk drive being a, a CD drive, it's always going to be read only, but the virtual hard drives you can toggle back and forth between read write or read only. You can protect them. And the virtual hard drives, you can also switch them back and forth between showing up as removable media or showing up as a fixed hard disk, which is something that while I have not tested this, Windows in its Windows to go iteration, which is officially discontinued, but tools still exist to, uh, to make that happen. Um, it essentially required something that identified as a fixed disk. Windows does not like installing to something that identifies as removable. So that's a way that you can probably get around that. And again, I haven't tried that yet, but probably that's how it would work. This keypad is not for any sort of encryption or anything like that. They do have units with encryption available. That's the ST400 rather than the ST300. Uh, and you can do that if you have a need for it. They also make units that accept M2 drives. So they're, they're going to be physically smaller than this nice big two and a half inch SSD. And when did we start describing two and a half inch SSDs as nice and big? It just blew my own mind for a second there. <laughs> um, but this is not for any sort of encryption. This is for selecting the various files on the unit that you have saved there and being able to mount them. I'm going to plug it in and I'm going to show you what I mean. Um, yeah. Creating the VHD, honestly, they have a Windows only tool for creating the VHD, but I just created them myself in Windows computer management. Doing the research and the reading on how this uh, works, this is a South Korean company, so some of their uh, web manuals need a little bit of a, you know understanding to figure out what they're trying to communicate. As long as you create your VHD as a fixed size VHD, not dynamically expanding, if it's a fixed size and it has to be a VHD, not a VHDX, it doesn't support the VHDX format, then it'll work. If it's a single VHD, fixed size, cool. You can mount that in Windows. You can take whatever boot media you have and just copy the contents to the VHD. Now it's bootable. Okay, simple as that. I literally took the ISO files that I've created for Windows PE and for the clean version of Windows 11 and just copied those into a VHD that I created for each one of those sized appropriately. Okay, now I can boot off of it. And it works very well. So, plugging this in so that I can show you all what it looks like when you plug it in. It's a USB-C cable. comes with USB-C to USB-A. So there's your compatibility, but C to C will work just as well. When you plug it in, it just turns on. And what you can see on the display there, I'll bring it a little closer to the camera, is that it's got two drives connected right now, two virtual hard drives. And then it's got directories that you can just use the keypad to go through. I have a directory for ISO files. If we go into the ISO directory, you can see that some of what I've got is an OpenSense installer. I've got Ubuntu. I've got, what else do I have in there? Linux Mint as well and Gparted. So there's my ISO files. If I had a, an optical drive, emulation turned on, then I could select any of those and they become available for booting. If I go back and go down to my VHD directory, you can see I've got a whole bunch of VHDs in there as well. I've got some tools that I have for work. I've got my clean Windows 11 installers. I've got Mosby. I have a couple of Windows PE boot drives. And this is just the beginning. I can create as many of those as I want and select them as I go. 
I also have a backups directory down here that doesn't have any boot media in it. The backups directory is literally there because, hey, I can boot using any of the boot media and then back up a machine to the actual hard drive itself. Okay, cool. So I'll just create a backups directory so that I have that there and I can back up anything that I need as I go. That works. <clears throat> From this root menu, I'm just remembering how to get into the, the menu system here. There's the, the key here has the, the settings gear wheel on it. So if I go into that, then I can go to mode setting. Yep. And this lets you essentially select what you want to have available. And as you can see, I've got the two virtual hard drives and then the actual hard drive within the unit available right now. If I wanted my optical disk drive, I could just go down there and then I can pull that up into an enabled position and I can, you know, if I save it at that point, then I can add an ISO and there you go. It's mounted and it's available for use. And when you exit, is that the right key for exiting? Yeah, close enough. It will save it. If I had changed the configuration, it would save it. And then when you select which files you want to mount, that gets saved as well so that when you plug it in, it immediately mounts those and it's good to go. And if I want to safely disconnect, a long press on the number nine key tells the unit to save. And then when the light starts blinking, there you go. You can disconnect it and you're all good to go. So that is a tool that I find really, really handy. I don't need to have umpteen zillion boot sticks floating around in my toolkit anymore. And I don't have to worry about overwriting them and then needing to recover something later. It's all on a single unit that I can dynamically choose what I want to mount. It presents as an emulation of the actual drive in hardware. There's no software modification going on and I'm good. This particular unit cost about $120 Canadian just for the hardware. It did not include the drive. But, you know, pick a drive that's of a size that works for you, whether that's one terabyte, two terabyte. I've put a four terabyte in here so that I have lots of room for taking backups of systems and uh, having additional SSD space with me for my job. And you're off to the races. Again, you can get a unit that does an M2 stick if you need something that's a little slimmer and, you know, easy to go. I don't know what prices are like for those. All of the M2 compatible units also offer encryption and, you know, dual passwords and multiple users and all this other fancy stuff probably elevates the cost. Again, I haven't looked at it, so I don't know. This was just the unit that is the basic stuff, does what I need it to do, doesn't have anything extra, and I'm happy with it. So that's my new toy, and that was, that's something that I have really been enjoying in the last week and look forward to working with and enjoying for a good long while to come. So that's it for today. If you have thoughts on other things that you would like to see me talk about or like to see me demonstrate, feel free to let me know right down there in the comments section. If it's a piece of hardware like this, then I mean, unfortunately, no guarantees that I have that available. But if there's something that you want to see available, then it doesn't hurt for you to let me know and I'll keep an eye out for it, certainly in the future. But yeah, Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. I am your next door netadmin, and we will see you next time.